church? Hell no. Are you no longer feeling comfortable in church? This podcast is for individuals who are desperately missing God, but don't know how to find Him. Substance abuse, domestic violence, sex offenses, acrimonious divorce can contribute to discomfort in the church. For these individuals, church is just not an option anymore. Ordained minister Dennis Hall and his guests invite you to listen to this podcast for topics that are inspiring, uplifting, and will bring hope to those who just feel church is not relevant in their lives today. I'm Dr. Dennis Hall, and I'm delighted you're listening to our podcast today. As always, uh, things in the news and sometimes on television grab my attention. And uh, this week, uh, something grabbed my attention that really uh, made me angry. And uh, I think I must have felt a little bit like Jesus felt when he was throwing the money changers out of the temple. I wish uh, television and podcast personalities would stop making assumptions about individuals' personal religious convictions. And it always seems that they're making these assumptions about individuals who profess to be Christians. I don't know if I've ever watched someone on radio or television or a podcast question a Muslim's faith. So why? Why why the Christians? You know, this week, comedian John Oliver on TV stated, you know, It's always strange to watch Trump act like he cares about religion because to echo something I heard said recently, I didn't know he was a Christian until several years ago when he happened to turn Christian. All of a sudden, he made a turn and became a Christian person. Now, John Oliver, of course, was referring to former President Donald Trump, uh, that his pointing out that presidential candidate uh, Kamala Harris, who at one time uh, proudly referred to her Indian heritage, almost exclusively speaks about her uh, black heritage now. And he was trying to disparage President Trump's comments about Kamala Harris, as well as Trump's comments about his faith. And in doing so, He revealed a total lack of understanding of evangelical Christianity. Now, people's lives are changed regularly by something that God undertakes. Now, sometimes when we reflect on these events, we might say it was a God moment, or it was a God thing, or it was a divine appointment. You know, in Psalms 33 Excuse me, in Psalms 37, 23, the scripture declares that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. You hear that? The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. God orders, arranges, and establishes the details of his children's lives, including some unexpected divine appointments. And I can tell you, after decades of walking with God, seeing him set up such appointments is a thrill without comparison. You know, a divine appointment is the uh, it's the conviction that God was responsible for a planned meeting or an event or a circumstance. In other words, a divine appointment is an important event or meeting that was predetermined by God. And God's divine intervention created the circumstances. And all who were involved feel a sense of supernatural timing and significance. You know, signs of a uh, divine appointment are, are, yes, they're subjective, and they're based on our personal experiences. You know, God-ordained events occur in settings that seem accidental or implausible and it prompts us to acknowledge the hand of God that pulled them together. You know, people involved in divine appointments often report having an intense sense of awareness or an inner understanding that they're supposed to be somewhere 
at a giving moment or meet someone in particular. Now, these God-ordained meetings produce life-changing experiences that profoundly affect the people involved and the strength of their faith. Now, I live in an area that could be described as having lower middle income homes to expensive upscale homes and everything in between. Now, less than a mile down the road from where I live, there's a personal storage facility that rents uh, spaces for storage. And you can rent anything from garage uh, size spaces to small four by eight units for storage. And I've rented a, a, a unit in this facility for several years that I use for storage in a small workshop. And three or four years ago, I noticed a tall man that looked to be in his 50s regularly parking a bicycle outside of one of the small 4 by 8 units. And something told me, something told me that I should go down there and knock on that door and introduce myself to that man. When he opened the door, I immediately noticed a cot and a microwave in this small space. Now, these spaces are not heated or air-conditioned. And after we introduced ourselves, I simply asked the man if he was living in this small storage unit. We talked for the next hour, and he told me about his life and how he had uh, lost everything as a result of alcoholism. His only income was a small disability check from the federal government. And over the course of the next two years, God allowed me and my wife to minister to my new friend, Kevin. Kevin and I had many discussions about God's promises in the scripture. And I gradually became convinced that Kevin, who had been through several rehab programs without success, loved Jesus despite his debilitating disease. Then there came a day that I no longer saw Kevin's bicycle parked by a storage unit. The management of the facility told me that Kevin had been hit by a truck and killed while riding his bicycle. I considered my interaction with Kevin to be a divine appointment. I could tell that God was talking to get, uh, Kevin through me and uh, that I was also being changed by his friendship. Kevin had told me that he knew he would be in heaven someday. And I asked him, what would you say to Jesus? What would you say to Jesus, Kevin? And he told me that he wanted to ask Jesus why he could never overcome his alcoholism. Now, I personally think that Kevin got to have that conversation. He got to have that conversation with Jesus. You know, and I personally have also been the beneficiary of a divine appointment. And you know, when I was a young professional, not too many years after graduate school, I was attending a conference in Hilton Head, South Carolina. One morning while jogging on the beach, a man in my career field that I had heard a lot about uh, joined me on the run. He was about 20 years older than me, and I was delighted to get to know him. And as we chatted uh, during the uh, our morning exercise, it was obvious that he was delighted to get to know me. And uh, little did I know that this chance meeting, this divine appointment, would result in having him as my mentor, both spiritually and professionally, for the next 15 years. You know, there are many examples of divine appointments throughout Scripture. You know, one instance of a divine appointment in the Bible was when Ruth, a Moabite woman, who was a poor refugee widow, was gleaning the edges of fields for leftover barley. You know, the law at that time required landowners to leave the edges and corners of the fields unharvested so that the poor could come and harvest for themselves. It was while she was doing this, that she met Boaz, the landowner. Now, this divine appointment eventually led to Ruth and Boaz getting married. 
And they had a son, Obed, who had Jesse, who had David, who became the king of Israel, and from whose lineage comes a new king, born in a manger, surrounded by cows and donkeys and visited by shepherds and wise men. That chance divine appointment at the edge of a field. You know, another great example of uh, divine uh, appointments or a divine appointment in the Bible is uh, found in the book of Acts in chapter 16. And uh, here we find that famous story of Paul and Silas. They were being uh, followed by a slave girl. And she was apparently possessed by a demon who had been making her money uh, through fortune telling. And she kept uh, following Paul and Silas day after day. And finally, the apostle Paul commanded the demon to come out of the girl. And the demon immediately left. And she had no longer had these fortune telling powers and was unable to make money. And that created a big fuss, and it resulted in Paul and Silas being beaten up for their beliefs and thrown into prison. Now, this is where the incredible counter with the Philippian jailer takes place. Paul and Silas were locked up in the inner dungeon of the jail in horrible conditions with their feet clamped in stocks. But instead of being overcome with despair, they chose to worship pray, and sing hymns to God. And the singing and praying caught the attention of the other fellow prisoners and the jailer. Yes, then something quite supernatural happened. A strong earthquake shook the prison and caused the doors of the prison to swing open and the chains to fall off every prisoner. Now, when this happened, the jailer woke up to this chaos taking place. And of course, he was extremely afraid. If the prisoners escaped, he was going to face serious consequences, you know, maybe even death. And in his fear and distress, he pulled out his sword and was ready to end his life rather than face the consequences of the prisoners' escape. Well, Paul saw what was happening, and in Acts 16 eight we read, But Paul shouted, Don't harm yourself. We're all here. The jailer called for lights, and he rushed in and fell trembling before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them out and asked, What must I do to be saved? And they replied, Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved, you and your household. Then they spoke of the word of the Lord to him and to all the others in his house. And at that hour of the night, the jailer took them and washed their wounds. Then immediately he and all his household were baptized. The jailer brought them into his house and set a meal before them. He was filled with joy because he had come to believe in God. He and his whole household. What a story. You know, you see what began as a hopeless night in prison for Paul and Silas became a divine appointment, leading to the transformation of not just one life, but an entire household through the power of God's grace and redemption. Those of us who profess to be followers of Christ, you know, we should live as though we could have a divine appointment with someone that any time, at any place. Now, God's timing is always perfect when he establishes a divine appointment. You know, it's, it's when he creates the opportunity for us to share our faith and encourage others or perhaps to just be a listening ear for someone. You know, only God knows when these times are going to occur. You know, another amazing standout story of divine appointment in the scripture is the story of Philip and the Ethiopian in Acts 8 verses 26 through 40 that tells us an angel of the Lord you know, came to Philip who happened to be one of the original seven deacons in the Jerusalem church 
rise and go toward the south to the road that leads down from Jerusalem to Gaza. Now, this is a desert road, and Philip did what he thought he was instructed to do. He rose and went, and there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of the queen of the Ethiopians, who oversaw all the treasure. You know, he had come to Jerusalem to worship, and he was returning. He was an important and powerful man. He was the treasurer of the whole country. You know, today he would probably have a title of something like the secretary of treasurer, the minister of finance. Bottom line is he was a big shot in his country, which is not what we think about of Ethiopia today, but the ancient nation of Kush and what is now Sudan was a nation of dark-skinned people that the Jews considered to be the ends of the earth. You know, the scripture tells us that the Spirit said to Philip, go up and join this chariot. So Philip ran up to him and heard him reading, what? It reading Isaiah, Isaiah the prophet, and he asked, and Philip asked him, do you understand what you're reading? And he said, how can I unless someone guides me? He invited to Philip to come and sit with him. You know, now the passage of Scripture that he was reading was this. As a sheep to the slaughter and as, you know, a uh, lamb, for each sure is silent. So he opened not his mouth. In his humiliation, his justice was taken away. And who will declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. And the eunuch said to Philip, About whom, pray, does the prophet say this? About himself or someone else? And then Philip opened his mouth. And beginning with this script, uh, this scripture that the Ethiopian was reading, he told him the good news of Jesus. And as they went along the road, they came to some water. And the eunuch said, See, here is water. What is to prevent me from being baptized? He commanded the chariot to stop, and they both went down into the water, Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized. And when they came up out of the water, the scripture tells us that the Spirit of the Lord caught up Philip, and the eunuch saw him no more and went on his way rejoicing. What a divine appointment. You know, what an unlikely candidate for conversion. You know, this person was from Ethiopia in Africa and had, had come up to Jerusalem more than 500 miles to worship God. So out of tens of thousands of Jews and Gentiles and Samaritans who needed to hear a story of Jesus, God leads Philip to this man on a desert road to Gaza. And then Philip, you know, apparently was moved by the Spirit, you know, to go to the man's chariot, not knowing what for or who's in the chariot. Just go to the chariot. It reminds me of feeling led to go to that storage unit where my friend Kevin lived. You know, the timing of the Spirit proves perfect because when Philip got to the chariot, he the open was reading out loud the book of Isaiah and reading in a specific place that refers to Jesus the Messiah. Now, let me tell you, what's really going on here is that the Lord is orchestrating the evangelism of Ethiopia. And we can jump to this conclusion because the early church leader, Irenaeus, wrote in the second century that this Ethiopian came a missionary among his people. Now, what can we learn about divine appointments from this biblical story about Philip and the Ethiopian? Well, first, you know, God's flawless timing is always demonstrated in divine appointments. And you know, it's when someone needs support and, and direction at just the right moment when they need it when a divine appointment is created. Or perhaps someone comes across us at that perfect timing of God when we needed 
the most. Now, sometimes a divine appointment has the purpose of putting an individual in our life who will be a successful mentor to us, providing insight and direction and profoundly influencing our spiritual and personal development. Now, that's what happened to me on the beach in South Carolina. The divine appointments sometimes put two people together when a stranger can share a message that directly answers a long-running prayer or worry. You know, divine appointments frequently, you know, come as a surprise and go against human plans and expectations, causing us to view them as miraculous. It was the it was miraculous for Philip to meet the Ethiopian on the desert road to Gaza. The participants in divine appointments often feel that there's a supernatural guidance or intervention that's occurring during these uh, experiences, causing them to realize that it's God who is directing the events. You know, early in my career, as a result of a, a chance meeting with a board chairman of a significant healthcare institution, he asked me if I'd be willing to analyze his institution's circumstances and provide him with some recommendations. And I agreed that after visiting his institution, I provided him a lengthy report. You know, his institution had complex and deep problems. And after several meetings, he offered me the opportunity to become the chief executive officer. I couldn't imagine anyone who would want that job with the issues that existed in their organization. But before I responded to him, I shared this proposition with a friend of mine who was a hospital chaplain. As I talked to my friend, the chaplain, he suggested that I write down all the reasons that I had to reject the offer and lift them up to the Lord. He went on to suggest that if God wanted me to accept this position, that my reasons for rejecting the offer would gradually be removed by God. I didn't appreciate it at the time, but my hospital chaplain friend was providing a divine appointment. And to make a long story short, over the course of the next several weeks, as I prayed about this opportunity, miraculously, all of my objections evaporated. I took the job, and it became a significant turning point in my career. Over the years, I've had the opportunity to provide career counseling to numerous young people, and to the surprise of most of them, I always included that they should submit their plans for their career to God. You know, if we genuinely believe that God is intimately involved in our lives, then we can expect that he will send people our way uh, to encourage us, to offer their love, and who will witness to us. You know, every time we find ourselves in the vicinity of a stranger, we should be open to the chance that this is a sacred event, that it's not just some serendipitous accident. Now, don't get me wrong. We don't need to think that there's eternal significance in every interaction we have, but we need to be open to the potential that God may be orchestrating an opportunity. You know, some of these opportunities happen in the course of a busy day when we have other stuff to do. I can think back over my life when I probably missed opportunities because I felt I was just too busy to get involved. You know, there are opportunities for divine appointments all around us. You know, they can happen when we're in line at the grocery store or sitting in the lobby of a doctor's office or waiting for a table at a restaurant or other similar places. You know, in in today's world, it seems like the moment people are not engaged, they pull out their cell phones and don't even see, let alone engage the people around them. You know, if we want to make ourselves available for God to spontaneously use us, 
then we need to be present. We we need to, as they say, we've got to get in the game. You know, uh, we need to be on the lookout, on the lookout for promptings and occasions because they're not going to come to us labeled with a sign that says, divine opportunity here. No, that's not going to happen. And if you're afraid you won't know what to do, if, uh, you know, you get this opportunity uh, or you're not going to know what to say, let me assure you that God, if God has set this appointment up for you, he's also prepared you for it. You know, as this podcast begins to wind down, let me say this to the listeners. You know, at the beginning of this podcast, I expressed my irritation at those who are questioning former President Donald Trump's Christianity. It would be a reasonable assumption that given what has happened to Donald Trump over the last eight or nine years, It would be a reasonable assumption that he has experienced some divine appointments that have had an impact on his life. We know that God's in control of everything. If you'd like to be a part of an unexpected divine appointment, then pray that God will have it come your way. Keep your mind, eyes, and ears attentive to the people and situations around you in which God's purposes might be accomplished for the advancement of his kingdom. Be ready or perhaps receive the Holy Spirit in a way that your actions and words may impact the lives of other people. Be ready and excited that God may at any time or place bring you into a position, however briefly, with a person that may have an impact on your life and their life. I hope you have a divine appointment today, and thank you for listening to me.